All right, so before we get to our sigma notation here, I have one uh, quick warm-up here that uh, introduces something just a little bit different. And that is, we have a piecewise function, but notice what this piecewise function is for. It's for derivative. the derivative, okay? Now, you may have already kind of inferred this or logically thought about this, but if you have a piecewise function and you take the derivative, you have to take the derivative of the pieces, so your derivative will also be a piecewise function, okay? Now, the question here is, is f differentiable at x equals 2? Okay? Now, how do we know if a function is differentiable? Okay. Is it continuous? But does con does continuity always determine no. whether if it's differentiable? No. Yeah. Okay. When could it be continuous but not differentiable? A sharp, sharp change in direction. A sharp change in direction. Mm -hmm. So it has to be continuous and also smooth. And uh, what does it mean if it's smooth? It doesn't have like this, like this. It doesn't oscillate, okay. it doesn't change chart direction, it remains. Okay, but think in terms of the calculus here. If it's smooth... Does it have third, uh, second derivative? Like, I mean... Third derivative? No. Is that a point of inflection? No. If it's smooth, then the derivative as we approach from one side will equal the derivative as we as we approach from the other side, okay? So if we look at this, okay, there are two ways that we could do this. One would be taking the integral of this, mm -hmm. all right, and doing a bunch of stuff with it. But we actually don't even have to do this because we're already told that it's continuous. We could say, okay, is f differentiable at x equals 2, all right? Well, when x equals 2... As we're approaching from the left, the derivative always equals 1, right? Mm -hmm. So as we come from the left, the derivative approaches 1, okay? As we approach from the right, f prime of x equals 3x. This is approaching 6, which obviously those are not the same. From the left, notice here at 2, 2 is the junction here. So that's, if anywhere is going to be not smooth, it's going to be at the junction between your pieces. Okay, because you've got to make sure the derivatives are equal. Well, the derivative... If this were to continue all the way to 2, it would equal 1. The derivative from the right, okay, the part that's bigger than 2, mm -hmm. it's going to equal 6. So they're not approaching the same thing. So we actually are going to have a, um, a, uh, a sharp change in direction. At 2. At 2. Mm -hmm. Okay? So no. So no. This wouldn't be differentiable at 2. Okay. Now we could go ahead and find f. f of x is going to equal x plus c and 1.5x squared. Yeah, 3x squared over 2 plus c. And then we know that f of 1 is 3, so we can solve for c. f of 1 is 3, so yeah, 0. x is between 0 and 2 means that 1 applies to here. So if f of 1 is 3, then 1 plus c has to equal 3. So this c has to be a 2 to make it 1 plus 2 equals 3. We can't use that same c on the second part because this goes from 2 up to 5. But this is where the junction to be continuous, to be continuous, then when x is 2, these would have to be equal. 
All right. So we have 2 plus 2 has to equal 3 times 2 squared over 2 plus C. Okay, so that's 6. Wait, 4 minus 6 is a negative 2. Did you get the 2 plus 2? I plug 2 into the first, the top part, and I plug it into the bottom part. Those have to be equal. Okay? So that means this right here must be 3x squared over 2 minus 2. Okay? Now it's continuous. It's continuous, but to figure out if it's smooth, we would have to take the derivative again, which was what we were given in the first place. So all this work, this might be what you initially think to do, but all of this is really unnecessary. Okay? Don't need this. We can just do it by looking at what we're given. Okay? So, just another little uh, new thing kind of thrown in here. Get our minds thinking about things from a different perspective. So now we want to spend the majority of our time here looking at sigma notation. All right, so you guys have worked some with sigma notation. It's going to be very, very important that you get comfortable working with sigma notation here in the next uh, couple of weeks, okay? Um, because we're going to be working with upper and lower sums. We're going to be working with Riemann sums. Um, and uh, you got to get comfortable working with this stuff. So there are rules that we have learned in the past that we're going to bring back to memory here. Just in the most basic sense, remember that when we're expanding sigma notation, what this means, i equals 0 to 5, okay? We're going to plug in a 0, and then plug in a 1, and then plug in a 2, until we get all the way up to 5. Okay? So if I'm expanding this, this may seem kind of trivial, but believe me, this is... You need to make sure you understand what you're doing with this. Okay? So, of course, this is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, and that comes out to 21. Okay? If I have the squares, notice, for one thing, we don't have to use I. Here it's J. We can use anything we want. And we also don't have to start at 0 or 1. We can start wherever we want as well. Okay? So, if... J starts at 3, we have a 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared plus 6 squared plus 7 squared. Okay, so we add all those up. We get 50 plus 36, 86 plus 49, 126, 135. Okay. Now, that we're going to remind you of a formula you learned at the beginning of pre-calc honors. We're going to remind ourselves of that in a little while near the end of the lesson here. Yeah, did you have a question? Yeah, I was going to say there's a formula you can use. Huh? Yes, yeah. Um, and those are three, form there are three formulas that you are going to need to know. Okay, we'll get to them. Okay, so this one... Notice here, be careful, k equals 1 to 4 is the sum we're finding of c. What's c? A constant. A constant. So, when k equals 1, it equals? C plus 1. And when k equals 2? C. And when k equals 3? C. And when k equals 4? C. So it's? 4c. 4c. Okay. So it's 4C. Okay? Alright, so this next one here is really getting into stuff that that we're going to be using a little bit more in, in AP Calculus here. And this involves a lot of rules that we've learned in the past, but we need to remember. Okay? 
So first of all, first of all, notice here the counter is k, or uh, the thing that's going up incrementally is, is k. This has a 1 over n. So since k is what's changing, we can consider 1 over n like a constant, all right? So guess what we can do here? We're going to pull it out. So we have 1 over n times the sum from k equals 1 to n of k squared plus 1. Now, here's another thing. This is another rule of sums that we have talked about briefly in the past or a long time ago and that is if I have the sum of two things inside the uh, the sigma notation I can take the sum of each one separately okay so if I see addition or subtraction here I can take the sum of those separately so I still have the 1 over n I'm gonna put some brackets here I'm going to have the sum from k equals 1 to n of k squared plus the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1. Okay? So there's that addition that we had. We separate into two different sums. Now, why would I do that? Okay, the k squared, we got a formula like we were talking about. What'd you say, Drew? One's a constant. One's a constant. So the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 is? 1, one. one n. times n, which is n. Okay, so, yeah, here we go. We have 1 over n times the sum. What is it, n? The sum from k equals 1 to n. So it's going to be a 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up to n minus 1 squared plus n squared. Okay? Wait, which one are you doing right now? I'm confused. That is your k squared. Okay? That's all this. Can you see that? No. Okay. Now, this second part we just said came out to 1. Okay? So plus 1n. One. One okay? 1n. Because you got to add 1 to every single n you have. We're going to add 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 oh, sure, n sure, times. Sure, 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 sure. Okay? So, so we can't really solve anything else unless we have the formula from down below. So the formula will look at n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6 is the sum of the squares. Okay? Why did they record that? Uh, that, if you took pre-calc honors last year, you proved it using math induction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Should we, should, we, should we memorize it? You should memorize this one. Even if you don't remember it from back then, you should memorize it now. Okay? So there's the formula. And then plus... We have n times 1 over n, which is just a 1. Okay, so check this out. This whole thing, those n's cancel out, these n's cancel out, and we have an n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Plus 1. Plus 1. That's our sum. Why do you know how to use this formula? Well, anytime you have the sum of a k squared, you can use this this formula. Every time you have something squared. Every time you have that variable squared, and that's it, and it's starting from one up to a number, right. you can use that formula. 
I remember we have uh, this sort of uh, formula for other equations. Yes, but we're going to look at all three of them here in a, in a um, moment. So how can we do, is it in the, where, where can we find it? So, do you right. simplify that? Uh, you, we could keep going. Um, we'll stop there for right now, okay? So then we have this. This is actually this is actually the basis for what we call the Riemann sum. Okay? And and all we're doing at this one, this one we're not really going to be able to simplify much at all, but I want you to see what's happening. That delta x is a constant. Okay? So I'm going to pull that out. Delta x times the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i. So what we have here actually guys is we're changing the x coordinate by a certain amount, that's the delta x, and then we're evaluating at each of those different values of x. Okay, now we'll explain that later, all right? It's okay if you don't understand that now, but I want you to make sure you understand the notation. We have delta x times it's going to be f of 1, oh, sorry, not f of 1, f of x sub 1 plus f of x sub 2 plus f of x sub 3 all the way up to the last one, f of x sub n. As long as you just understand the notation of expanding that sigma right now, that's all you need to know. We're just changing the i from a 1 to a 2 to a 3 all the way up to an n. Wait, what does that mean? What did you Like x sub 2, what does that mean? That just means the first x coordinate that we want, the second x coordinate, the third x coordinate, all the way up to x coordinate number n. We're going to be evaluating our function at a bunch of different points. Okay? That's all that means for right now. Okay, so this last one, guys. This last one here on this page. Use sigma notation. So, when you're trying to use sigma notation to write this as a sum, you need to look at what's staying the same and what's changing. So what's staying the same? And it's 1 plus something, okay? So we can use whatever we want. I, N, X, doesn't matter, okay? Let's go ahead and use that. So we're going to do N equals, now where does N start? 1, and it goes up to 15. So that is the sigma notation for this sum right here. Okay? Yeah, that wasn't too hard. So in the previous examples that we were looking through, we saw how the sum of a constant, if we're going from 1 to n of a constant, is just the constant times the n. All right? We also saw that the sum of a sum or difference, you can take the sum of each part separately. Okay, and then here you had a constant multiple. We saw in a couple of those examples that you could pull the constant out because because we're adding, if each thing we're adding is multiplied by the same thing, that's a common factor. And you guys know you can factor out the common factor. All right, so then we have these three formulas. These are three formulas that you proved back when you were doing uh, math induction in pre-calculus, Okay. So at this point, we're not going to reprove them, but we are going to, we are going to um, um, use them quite a bit. So these are things that you do need to have memorized. Okay, so you can add them to your list of things to memorize. All right, the sum of the integers from 1 to n will simply be n times n plus 1 all over 2. Okay? The sum of the cubes, 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus 4 cubed all the way up to n cubed, is n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. If you notice, the reason why we put these next to each other 
is that the sum of the cubes is just the square of the sum of the integers. Okay? That's kind of an easy way. If you know this one, you can remember that one pretty easily. It's just this one squared. Okay? But that's for the i cubes. All right? Try to keep them straight. The i squares, the sum of the squares, is the one that can be tricky to remember. The sum of the squares is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Okay? And again, those are just things that you've got to memorize. But let's look at how we would use this. Okay? I'm going to evaluate the sum from i equals 1 to n of i plus 1 over n squared for n equals 10, 100, 1,000, or 10,000. Okay? So the key here is going to be simplifying each of uh, this sum, first of all. Okay, so I'm going to use some of the properties. Notice that the counter is the i. i equals 1 to n. All right, so I can treat this over n squared as simply a constant. Okay, so I'm going to factor that out. I'm going to make it 1 over n squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n of i plus 1. Okay? Now I'm also going to do some of my properties. Okay? First of all, I'm going to split this i equals 1 to n of i plus the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1. Okay? Well, now, here's the sum of the constant. So, if I add up 1 n times, what do I get? N. n. 1 times n would be n. Okay? Here I have the sum of the integers. And our formula for that is n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay? Now the reason why I'm simplifying first before I plug stuff in is because notice now what happens. When I distribute in the 1 over n squared, I get some stuff canceling. The n cancels at the top, so it's n plus 1 over 2n. And here the n cancels with one of the n's on the bottom, so it's plus a 1 over n. And now if I want to plug in 10, that sum is going to be 11 over 20 plus 1 tenth. Okay, so 1 tenth is 2 twentieths, so that's going to be 13 twentieths. Okay? If n equals 100... 100 plus 1 is 101 over 200 plus 1 one hundredth. Well, 1 one hundredth is 2 two hundredths, so that's going to be a 103 over 200, and so on. I think you guys get the idea, okay? But by simplifying it first, it makes evaluating for different values of n much simpler, okay? All right.